Um, um, if you could introduce yourself briefly and make your part. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for giving me, for giving me this opportunity to be able to speak to you in a few words. And first of all, I would like to excuse myself because I could not find the hub. <laughs> I was late. A lot of people come to find me. So I excuse myself. Secondly, people have been discussing a lot about the genocide. In one word, there is Resolution 955 of November 8th, 1994. What does it call the genocide? The Rwandan genocide. That's it. That is Resolution 955 of November 8th. I repeat. So I think that we should not keep on discussing, calling it, shall we call it this X or Z or what? It is more than clear. When it comes to the Chacha courts, because now I'm finishing with this one, and going to the Chacha courts in Gachacha itself, since 1994. <coughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen. In 1994, I was myself in Rwanda. 1995, I was in Rwanda. I only lived to Rwanda in 1996. For sure, in 1994, many judges had been killed, but a few of them were still existing in the country. And I remember with the Dutch taxpayer, you people who are gathered here, with your taxpayers' money, many judges were trained since 1994 in order to try and convict hundreds of thousands of Rwandans who were already in prison. <coughs> I was there. Since those, all of those people who were trained, about 1,500 people, who were trained, none of them went to any court to think and talk about the genocide between 1994 and 2000. None spoke about the genocide. It was in 1999, as you say it very well, that the government, which had forgotten about 150,000 people, Hutus, who were rotting in the prisons, that is when you started to think about how shall we put it? How are we going to call it? That time, that one in the government had trained enough young guys who would work as witnesses in many different courts. This is the truth. By 2000, that is when Rwandan, <coughs> the Rwandan government took now a few individuals who had never learned anything just from the hills and mountains, who had no notion in law, who did not know, who actually, who even never knew how to read or write. And again, those who stood on the government <coughs> to try only Hutus because the, the urgency was there, as the president said, President Kagame himself, a genocide had taken place. But in taking, but having committed a genocide, a war crimes, a war, war, a war crime, <coughs> or a crime against humanity, the, the three of them, even the genocide, the three of them are killing people. The United Nations, in their resolution 955, if I refer to it again, defined the Rwandan genocide, gave a boundary. The Rwandan, the Rwandan genocide started on, according to resol that resolution, on January 1st to, until December 31st, 1994. It is within a framework of 
12 months. <coughs> but to the Rwandan government, the genocide started in 1990 and ended in 1994. Now a big, huge question mark. Where are the army guys, the RPF soldiers, who killed the people all the way from Bumba when they attacked from Uganda, crossed that country, and all the people, the reason why all the people who were displayed, who were being, who were, or, uh, who were fleeing the zones, all the people were fleeing the zones of being occupied by the RPF guys, the Tutsi rebels, if we put it that way. So they were being, they were, they were fleeing because they were being killed. I was a good example. In 1993, around 19, early 1994, we had approximately a million people surrounding the capital city of Kigali, coming to Begin town, going to sleep in the open area. No shelter, no food, <coughs> no clean water. <coughs> Dying of epidemies, all of those diseases, and because they were <coughs> fleeing, they were being killed by the army, the RPF army. Now, can you give us a list of about a hundred soldiers who killed people before April 6, 1994, during those areas your army was controlling? Is there any? I have never heard of any person who has been tried, who has been convicted, and yet we know thousands of people who have been killed. What is the solution then? Gachacha would have been a good solution. If the Gachacha wouldn't have been a government orchestrated instrument. But unfortunately, it was a government instrumented stuff. This much, you know it as I do. Gachacha is a court where to seize try and convict Hutus. This is a fact. Therefore, reconciliation will never be possible. Unless, if this Gachacha is supposed to be Gachacha, and bring all Rwandans around the table as we are here, in a face-to-face, -face, look at each other, bring the whole truth, and through words, we have been lying throughout history saying because of a kind of propaganda, because it is me who's supposed to be on power today, I have to fight for it by all means. I have, I have killed my neighbor, I have to hide it by all means, and this and that. <coughs> if we want to find a lasting solution for one end, what we need from the international community would rather be to bring us around a table, ask us to bring the whole truth, to this table and through <coughs> dialogue, we solve our conflict. Because when it comes to Gachacha, Gachacha, I'm sorry, has never been a solution, but rather <coughs> a problem. This is my way of seeing things. Gachacha has been a problem for the last more than 10 years. <coughs> it has created a huge gap between Hutus and Tutsis. Those people who live in Rwanda or who are pro X or Z will tell me that, no, you are lying. Because they know that in Rwanda, you don't tell what you think is right. <coughs> Only because of that. But otherwise, the charter has been more of a problem than a solution. Is, is anybody want to elaborate on this because it's a heavy accusation? You say there's a conspiracy of uh, the Rwandan government trying to manipulate uh, Gacheta, trying to manipulate justice. Um, is anyone? I heard you and then you, okay? I just want My name is Eric. Um, uh, I'm from here. I just want to watch the statement made by. Uh, 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 Paul Sessalina. 
Um, um, what does he say about the interna international recognition that uh, Gachach has earned? Because Gachach's system uh, um, of transitional justice has been, is now a model for uh, uh, almost uh, the entire uh, Africa conflict uh, world. Uh, we, 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 we read about um, delegations, after delegations, going to Rwanda to learn about the, uh, 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 the Gachach as, as a good practice in uh, uh, after conflict management. For me, for me I, 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 I came here to, mm -hmm. hoping that I would be into the discussions that are around the issue. Mm -hmm. But there are things that I cannot really comment about. Like, for example, to say that uh, the, the, the government trained people to be witnesses, like the for God's sake, we have to have at least some minimum, some minimum uh, civility in whatever we say, and and, I have, and this is no offense to anybody, but that is a, 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 a brand and I would say uh, lie I have ever seen since I was born. And some of I, I don't want to give you as a witness, but at least. We have across different criticisms about the church. We disagree on many things, but I would want to ask ties of. I'm sorry to bring in this, but at least if you have ever come across at somewhere that says that Rwanda trained people to be witnesses in different. You know, there, there are things on which we cannot, we cannot have an, an intellectual debate about. I think we should ask him to give an example rather than yeah. oh, can you throwing the Let me give you my personal example. On November 17, 2011, I was getting the late Lantos Award in the Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. This is one of the most recent examples. The one in the government trained people. The people wrote letters to the Lantos Foundation people. And they even planned to come and demonstrate <coughs> where at their office. When they came to demonstrate to their office, these people called me and said, these people are looking, they want to come and demonstrate. How do we deal with this such a case? I told them, okay, this is a very good idea. Let these people speak, give them an opportunity, a chance to talk to you so that you can listen to them. They brought the first people, about 12, 12, 15 people on the queue, on the line. They came into the office one by one, coming in from one entrance, going out through another one. The first one came in, now repeated what they had told him or her to say. The second came in, and then the Lantos people were just taking notes. The second person came in. The same thing, the Lentos people taking notes. Catherine Lentos and uh, even uh, Denise and many other people working with the foundation. When the third person came in, they stopped taking notes and said, okay, go ahead. The fourth came in, the tenth person came in and the 15th person came in. <coughs> I did not know about this. Otherwise, I would have brought to you a press release written by the foundation, the Relentos Foundation, which is still on their website. They said, I call, that these people have been trained to tell and repeat the same things. Since they have been repeating the same things from A to Z, and then it looks like a lie. 
This is a pure example. The quick intervention. Thank you very much. Uh, the quick intervention that I have. No, 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 no. This just could be far from here. No. Because I think that's a personal experience. <laughs> 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 I am a man called Ignaz, and I live in Utrecht, in Rwanda. Um, initially, I have, I have some few questions to be addressed to uh, Olivier, but uh, if I may just briefly talk on, on this issue of uh, Chacha. Sure. I think there is a, there is a confusion. And this confusion is the root cause of the misunderstanding. For foreigners who don't know Rwanda and who have, who have not eyesighted what happened in Rwanda. Uh, there was one uh, person, Charles? Yeah, Charles. Yeah. Um, Charles said, and also the moderator said, uh, there is a problem. Some people say the Gachacha courts are only, or <coughs> they are only an instrument of the government, whereby one group of people is judging another group, while there will be a possibility of creating reconciliation by allowing the two parts, the two parts <coughs> to talk, to what the reconciliation? That, that's, I think I'm clear on that. That's how I, I understood. But the problem is this. If we may come back to the understanding of genocide. Genocide, by definition, comes from genos and side. It means killing people of a specific characteristic so they, there is a way of identifying these people, and then for it to be called a genocide, there is a, it's, it's a process. It can't be accidental. Genocide goes through a process. You start by um, uh, giving, like, demonizing that group, and educating the population, and bringing together instruments for that purpose, and then at, at up to the point where the implementation comes and everybody is ready, psychologically and materially, to do it. <laughs> so I wonder here whether, if I may ask Charles, whether he knows some of his neighbors who are Tutsi or Hutu, depending on his uh, ethnic group, who killed his family members during the 1994 genocide? Because if, if, if this comes in, then it will be what I hear through the statements here, like a double genocide. Then it will be true. If I may come to uh, Mr. Paul, the statement, uh, when you say the Rwandan genocide, what does it mean? I didn't get it. Does it mean that it's a, it's a double genocide or it means something else? So in brief, if I may conclude on this, it's like people want something that can't exist or which is um, uh, not reasonable because it's not communities or citizens or the population, parts of the population, killing each other. This did not happen. So I, I conclude think, on I this. You made your point. I think there are people dying to, to say something to you. OK, yeah. May, may I go to, uh, after. to uh, Olivier? Olivier. Um, uh, Mr. Olivier, um, made a good presentation. Uh, I like intellectual looking like presentations. They are easily debatable. Uh, he said, no, 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 but. 
<laughs> um, he said something about the similarities of um, the leadership in Rwanda since 1962, up to, sorry? The three presidents. Yeah, the three presidents. I, I, I'm avoiding to say presidents because in a country there is a leadership. And, and that's why I even feel bad why you mention one pre the, the name of Kagame here. He, he is the president of the country, but there is a leadership in Rwanda. So I don't really understand why why his name can be. So do you, um, after drawing the similarity, is there or are there any differences? I mean positive. Are there any positive differences? Would you draw positive differences between the three leaderships? Okay. The second point, you mentioned uh, Give something. Give me a couple of minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. The second point, you you wrote a book on memory. Uh, I'd be happy to read it. I haven't read it yet. And you mentioned um, some two memory dimensions. Uh, there is. Um, cultural and psychological dimension of memory. And this dimension, how, how would you think they, they can be applied in Rwanda? Or how, how do you refer, how do you take these two dimensions to reflect them to the Rwandan reality? Do you think, for instance, the government of Rwanda or uh, should, for instance, help people go through the memory psychologically, individually, or do you think something else? Thank you. Okay, the, the last question. If you were elected, <laughs> <laughs> the, the very last one. Okay. If you were elected as, as the president of Rwanda, yeah. what would you do to build a better Rwanda? If you give five five pillars, five dimensions to build a better one. Okay. First, Charles, and then okay. <laughs> no, I think uh, yeah, perhaps I have not to enter deeply in the discussion about that. I thank you very much to have uh, been able to put uh, us together because it's the first time I meet such discussion from when I am in Europe. So. I think you, you'd better uh, get another opportunity to organize a seminar for two or three days, but not for three, three hours. <laughs> anyway, what I would, I'd like to say uh, is uh, it's not a question of double genocide. It's a fact. We, we are in the front of a fact. More than three million Rwandans have been killed. They are Hutu, they are Tutsi. Is, this is not a notion of double genocide. And we say, impunity must stop. Whatever the killer is, must be Hutu, must be Tutsi, he must be in the front of justice. But which kind of justice? Not the justice they say, okay, you are the side, you must, like Kagame said about Ingabiri. He said, it's not normal that the president say, that somebody is guilty before the tribunal says he's guilty. And he said it in Kampala, he said it in the BBC, everywhere. This kind of justice cannot encourage people to come and discuss and be in the justice in Rwanda. In any way, what I would like to say, uh, there is a kind of terrorism when somebody is saying his opinion, I think that, he can't be wrong. But don't just say, oh, it's double genocide, you are a negationist, now I hope this law will change, then you cannot speak because you are starting to be in this and this. No, I don't agree, and if we get opportunity to get more days to discuss, I bring you the documents. I've made the research myself on that. Thank you. But the question I asked you was, tell me whether you know a neighbor who is Tutsi or who killed your family members. During I, know, the genocide. I know them monitoring 10 people who killed During mother. genocide? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> well, that's, you should take them. I bring you the
my that my name is Shambatis. Uh, I agree with Ellen when she said that all crime must be brought to justice. I agree with her. Did I say that? Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. during your speech you said something like that. <laughs> yeah? I would like just to ask a question to Paul and Alphonse and the opinion of Olivier. The President, the President Kagame says, people we had to shoot down in the king, we, we did it. What do you think about? He said it in Kinyarwanda, about what Yeah? Yes. No, other people had to bring back from the Congo, we did it, we brought it. But I chose. We had to shoot precisely. And the king killed them. And we did it. How do you see black man of law, black like politician, and black like journalist? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will start with him because he has also got to ask some questions. Um, um, allow me to stand up because when I stand yeah. up, I, I'm more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ideas flow. <laughs> but the first thing, perhaps, that, that, that really astonishes me here, before I come to your question, is if we could have this type of platform where people could discuss without fear of anything, that would be great. Quickly to your question. Question number one Positive similarities among the three presidents. Yeah, presidents, the title we give to those who lead us Kaibanda, Abiyarmana, and Kagan. I see one major, let's say two major similarities. One, uh, I say differences. You mentioned similarities before. Positive differences. I want, I want differences. Yeah. <laughs> One. Of course, the similarities or differences stand from similarities. They all have development as a center. Kaibanda, on his own, in his own way, Abiyarimana in his own way, and Kagame in his own way. That's not different. That's of course, different. it's it's one thing they see differently. Could you highlight it? Under Habyarimana, Rwanda was called uh, the Swiss South Africa, which meant something else that than Singapore South Africa. <laughs> These are the two concepts of development that are all good, but that are completely different. We see a city which is called Kigali. Uh, the, the great thing is to see, uh, of course, people are getting jobs, uh, people are, are having a nice city, economy is growing. But under Birmana, I was small at the time, but I think I remember things started in the countryside. I, I remember my father telling me that we had a telephone line in Bimba before they had in Russia, <laughs> which is which is something that when I remember it now, I say, <coughs> so. I don't have many of them. I have more dissimilarities, but uh, uh, negative differences. Uh, but I don't go into that. Allow me to jump to the second question, which was the cultural dimension and psychological dimension of uh, memory. And I have a threat to, to run. Let me take just one very simple cultural aspect of our memory. And I think part of our sickness as Rwandans come from there. How do we introduce our short? Tales in Rwanda. Uh, can I tell you which one was the one who was the one who was the one who was the one the entire story. For me, this is unacceptable. When I, I, I translate to my daughters, they tell me, where do you come from? From which culture? Because they can't understand how people could call themselves cows and others rats. Take another one. The most popular child poem, Ichivugo, that everybody I think here knows, that I learned in high school, in primary school, was uh, just try to put it into English. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch people here will run away immediately. 